Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to show you how to create these really affordable wall hanging macrame shelves. I saw a couple of variations of these on Pinterest, so I'm gonna link a couple of them down below for you if you wanna check those out instead. So I'm trying to decorate by DIYing as much as I can and keeping everything on a low budget. So if you've been following me on this channel, um, you've seen the acrylic calendar and also the little ledge shelf. So I will link those down below if you're interested in DIYing those. So I'm going to start out with some scrap kiln dried lumber that I have left over from another project. I was building some shelves in my dining room and I didn't want to throw these away. So I got this wood from Home Depot. It's actually one of their cheaper woods. Um, you can get this in different thicknesses and also in different widths. The width on this one is seven and a half inches and um, the length when I originally bought, I think it was like eight feet or something, but I chopped it down. But of course you can make it any length you want. I happen to have 13 and a half inches left over. So that's what I'm using for the shelves. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill some holes into the corners of the shelves. So I make a mark half an inch from each corner of the wood. And then using the smallest drill bit that I have, I create just a pilot hole so that it doesn't splinter the wood when I use a bigger drill bit. And then I gradually increase the size of the drill bit until I get it to the size that I want, which is a quarter inch. So now that I'm done with that, I just took a sand block and I just smoothed out the holes, which I totally forgot to film here. So remember to do that first before we move on to the next step. Okay, next I'm using my favorite primer of all time. This is the Sensor 123 Bullseye Primer and you can use it on all sorts of surfaces. So I'm just going to give my shelves a quick first coat here. I'm gonna set that aside and let it dry for about an hour. And then next, I'm going to give it two coats of this Waverly paint, and it's their chalk finish paint. I don't think it's actually chalk paint because I've never actually written on it with chalk before, so I don't know, but um, it gives it a very, very nice matte finish. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside so that it completely dries, which you know can take only, only a couple of hours because it's like a super matte paint. Um, so now we're gonna work on the macrame part. So for this bit, I'm just going to use repeating square knots, and of course, I'm using Dollar Tree twine here. So for the length of this, obviously it's totally up to you, but for me, I decided to hang it 22 inches from the anchor point. And I'm also going to add an extra five inches because I do want to create some little tassels at the end of it. And then I'm going to double this number so that I'm creating two strands instead of four strands. It'll make a little bit more sense at the end here. Basically, for the filler cord, it's going to be made up of nine strands of the Dollar Tree twine cut at 54 inches. What I do is I just create a knot at the top so that all the strands are held together and then I tape it down. And then on the other end, I wrap it up in a clothespin and as I'm working, I release it from the clothespin so that it's not a big tangled mess. It's just easier to work with when you're creating knots. For the working cord, I did three pieces of the twine, but at 27 feet each. So I know that the working cord is made up of three strands, so we're just gonna treat it as one cord here. And what I do is I wrap each end up with a clothespin so that it's easier to work with. And then I place the midpoint of the working cord right underneath the filler cord. So I'm going to create my first knot here. So what I do is I take the right working cord, I place it over the filler cord, then I take the left working cord, place it over the filler cord, and then through the working cord loop. Okay, next up, I take the right working cord, I place it underneath the filler cord, then I take the left working cord, going over the filler cord, and then through the right working loop. I pull tight, and then I push the knot upwards. Now I'm going to repeat that, but I'm going to start with the left working cord first. So I take the left working cord and I place it underneath the filler cord and over the right working cord. Then I take the right working cord going over the filler cord and then through the left working loop. Again, pull tight and push upwards. Now I'm going to repeat that one more time, but this time around I'm going to start on the right working cord. So for me, sometimes I don't like to like have to remember if I started with the left or the right knot. So what I like to do is, here's a little trick here. If you zoom in really close, you can see that there's like a V. So whichever the side the V is on, that's the cord that's gonna go underneath the filler cord. So if you ever get to a stopping point and you don't know if you last worked on the left or the right cord, just take a look at your knots and find the V. 
So in this case, the V was on the right side, so I'm gonna take the right working cord, place it underneath the filler cord and over the left working cord. And then I take the left working cord going over the filler cord and through the working right loop. Once again, I pull tight and I push the knot up and I repeat this until I get to the very end of this whole thing. So once I get to the end, which is going to be the end of the filler cord, I'm going to leave about 5 inches unknotted so that it can create tassels underneath my shelves. And of course, I repeated this whole thing again because I needed two of them. Okay, so now that the paint on my shelf has finally dried, okay, now I am going to attach the rope to the shelves. Okay, so I'm going to just use a loop turner here to pull some of the twine through the quarter inch hole. In retrospect, I should have made the hole a little bit bigger. So don't be like KL, use something a little bit bigger than the quarter inch here. And then once I get everything through, I'm just going to go ahead and tie a really big knot at the end there. So I take the other rope and I also feed it through the other hole. And now you have both of the ropes kind of just hanging off like that. And um, to anchor it to the wall, I'm just going to use a D-ring. So I slip a D-ring through both of the ropes like so. And then I kind of just fold it over so it kind of looks like that. And then I just feed each end of the rope through the holes of the shelf. So I am pretty much done with the shelf, but I wanted to add a little bit more to it because I have some leftover vinyl from my um, acrylic calendar. You can easily do this with contact paper or even wallpaper, but I feel like vinyl um, that you use for your Cricut works really, really well. What I do is I just cut a piece and I place it on the front of this shelf, and then I just cut the edges off using an X-Acto knife, just placing the knife really close to the edge and then kind of sliding um, down the edge of the, the shelf. And it just adds this extra decorative touch. It kind of looks like I hammered some brass to the shelves, but it's just vinyl. And that's pretty much it. To hang it, I just use a simple little hook and uh, and I hang it through the D-ring here and I just have some little plants and little trinkets and um, some of Grudy's art to right here. So I don't know, I think it really adds to the wall. Um, there's one small thing that I do want to add to this, but I'm just waiting for Home Depot to have another order of some of their lumber, which they don't have in stock right now, which is kind of a, a bummer, a bummer for lumber. So yeah, that is the project for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it inspired you. If you're going to try this out, please shoot me a photo to my Instagram, heykl. Love to take a look at your work, and I will catch you in another video. Bye!